Welcome back to Prophecy Unveiled, The Last Days. And we are indeed living in the last days. My question to you is, are you ready? Are you prepared for what is about to come upon this earth? What we're going through right now is nothing compared to what is coming. And you've got to be living in outer space not to notice that something's going on. Something is wrong. The Apostle Peter spoke in the book of 2 Peter, chapter 1, verse 19, that you do well to pay attention to the prophetic word of Scripture as to a lamp shining in a dark place. In other words, the prophetic word of God is like a lamp shining in a dark place. And believe me, we're in a dark place right now. The words of prophecy concerning these last days are, are a light to the believer and should not be ignored. The prophecies of the end times, which God is now unveiling and revealing, are prophecies which were spoken long ago. But they're now being opened up and prophets of today are declaring and bringing insight and understanding to the people of God. As the Apostle Paul states in 1 Corinthians 14.22, Prophecy is for a sign for those who believe. Prophecy is for a sign for those who believe. So those who believe should be paying attention to the prophetic word of scripture that's being given to you because it's a lamp shining in a dark place. But the Apostle Peter in the book of 2 Peter also spoke of those who who will rebel against the prophetic word in these last days and will rather seek out false prophets who will tickle their who will tickle their ears with untruths and vain promises god has a prophetic message to believers today and it is the same message given to the prophet ezekiel to give to the house of israel in his day the pro- the house of israel also rebelled against the prophetic word of god God's message today is no longer just to Israel. It is for all of us. For today, Scripture says, both Jew and Gentile, both Jew and Greek are his people. And how do you know if you're Jew or Greek or Jew or Gentile? According to Romans 2.28, a Jew is not a Jew who is one outwardly. And the circumcision that God now requires is not the outward circumcision of the body, but a Jew is one who is a Jew inwardly, and his circumcision is of the heart by the spirit. For as believers, we are of the house of Israel. For the name Israel, which was given to Jacob, symbolized a transformation in character of Jacob whose name meant, previously meant, deceiver. And just like Jacob, all who are children of the new covenant have undergone a transformation transformation of character also through our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So having been grafted into the family of God, we are all one. Romans 10, 12 and Colossians 3, 11 says there is no distinction between Jew and Greek for the same Lord is Lord of them all. And according to 1 Corinthians 12 and 13, for by one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Paul reminds us in Romans chapter 9, verses 6 through 8, that they are not all Israel who are descended from Jacob. Neither are they all God's children because they are of Abraham's descendants. Paul says that it is not the children of the flesh who are children of God, but the children of the promise are regarded as descendants. God considers all of those who are, uh, who are of Abraham's faith to be Abraham's descendants. Therefore, the prophecies of the prophet Ezekiel in the book of Ezekiel are prophecies to both Israel of the Old and New Covenant. Why did God want Ezekiel to prophesy to Israel? 
Well, Ezekiel 2, 3 says, because the sons of Israel were a rebellious people who rebelled against God and still trans- transgressed against him to this very day. We too are rebellious people who to this very day still transgress against him, even though we claim we are of him. We rebel against his word. We transgress our, or, or violate his word every day. When we lie, cheat, and steal, we are rebelling and transgressing against him. When we commit acts of fornication or adultery, we are rebelling and transgressing against him. When we worship idols, make places, people, our, uh, our things, or other things, our God, we are rebelling and transgressing against him. When we profane his name but by doing all manner of evil in the dark, yet calling on his name by day, we are rebelling and transgressing against him. When we profane his temple, I mean the, this body of ours where the Holy Spirit dwells, by allowing all manners of evil to take place in it, we are rebelling and transgressing against him. And so God's message today is the same as yesterday. For he says in Malachi 3, 6, that he does not change. So what did God want Ezekiel to prophesy to Israel? Because of their rebellion and transgression, according to Ezekiel 2, 10, he was to prophesy lamentations, mourning, and woe. Lamentations, mourning, and woe. Now, what are lamentations? Lamentations are poems or songs that express sorrow for one who is dead or songs that accompany funerals. Mournings are rumblings, growlings, such as moanings for a person's death. A woe in Hebrew refers to wailing, a loud and prolonged cry of grief or pain. The Lord God wanted Ezekiel to prophesy that the future of Israel would be filled with death, and cries of grief and mourning if they did not turn from their wicked ways. And my brothers and sisters, it is the same for us. It is the same prophecy for us. If we do not turn from our wicked ways, there will be death and cries of grief and mourning. So how would the lamentations, mourning, and woe come? Well, God declared in Ezekiel 6.11 that because of Israel's evil abominations, their downfall would become by sword, famine, and plague. Their downfall would come by sword, famine, and plague. What does it mean by sword? It means that a significant number of God's people would be killed by weapons. Does this mean that they would kill each other with weapons? Not necessarily. Ezekiel 7.15 says that the sword would come from the outside. In other words, God will allow his people to be attacked by an outside source and suffer great casualties. Now, as I talk about Ezekiel and those things that God told him to prophesy to Israel, think of America because this is America. This Israel that Ezekiel is prophesying to is the same uh, uh, as America. Ezekiel 7.15 and 17 says that the famine and plague would come from within. So the sword would come from the outside, but the famine and plague would come from within. Many will die from the scarcity of food and water in their own country. And many would die from plagues or diseases and from wild beasts that would kill a significant number of children. This is what Ezekiel prophesied to Israel for their abominations before the Lord. Now, doesn't this sound familiar? According to Revelation 6, 1 through 8, when Jesus Christ breaks open the seven seals of judgment of God, the second, third, and fourth seal will bring exactly the same judgments as Ezekiel prophesied to Israel, sword, famine, pestilence, and wild beasts. In fact, Revelation 6, 8 says that one-fourth of earth's population will be destroyed this way. That would be about 1.5 billion people. Now, how does all of this relate to us today? The same judgments 
that were prophesied to Israel by the prophet Ezekiel are the same judgments that have been prophesied to us today. Let me say that again. The same judgments that were prophesied to Israel by the prophet Ezekiel are the same judgments that have been prophesied to us today and are being prophesied to us today. For Peter 4.17 says that it is time for judgment to begin with the household of God. Look, judgment doesn't begin with the, with the unsaved. It begins with the saved. It begins with us, those who call ourselves followers of Christ. God said that he would bring the sword against Israel because of their wicked ways. He will do the same today, even to America, a country that professes to be Christians. Isn't that what is happening today? America is despised by some who are plotting her demise. That's what you see happening. America is despised by some who are plotting her demise. And, and you see how that is happening today. They're plotting America's, they are plotting the downfall of America. God is calling his people in America to turn from their wicked ways. As we have declared before, a country does not fall because of the unrighteous in it. It falls because of the lack of righteous people in it. Could there be, uh, could there be a coming famine in this great land of ours? Well, just look at how, pro how prices are skyrocketing. The price of food and gas is going up tremendously. We see it happening. Some predict the price of gas to be as high as $8 a gallon countrywide by the year's end. It's, it's, that, uh, uh, it's $8 a gallon in some states right now. California, I believe, uh, has, is, is, the gas is as high as $8 a gallon. All it takes is a monstrous disaster like COVID, COVID-19. Whether it is a natural disaster, economic disaster, or a human disaster, we can be thrust into famine just like that. We, what about plagues? We are experiencing COVID-19, which has now killed over 700,000 Americans. Throughout history, other infectious diseases have caused debilitation and premature death to large portions of the human population. But modern antibiotics, vaccines, and sanitation methods seem to have conquered them. In fact, in the late 1960s, the U.S. Surgeon General stated that the book could be closed on infectious disease. But by the 1990s, infectious diseases re-emerged with a vengeance, including killer infection diseases such as AIDS, Lyme disease, Legionnaire's disease, Ebola, Hantavirus, West Nile virus, tuberculosis, BSC, and SARS. Today, bubonic and pneumonic, uh, pneumonic plagues are on the rise. TB is on the rise, along with mumps and smallpox, virtually after most of these had been wiped out. Scientists say that yellow fever can emerge again with a great vir virulence. And what about death from wild beasts? Well, consider bird flu spread by birds and diseases borne by mosquitoes, which include the West Nile virus, malaria, and eastern equine encephalitis. An uncontrollable outbreak of one or more of these plagues and our diseases could very well wipe out one-fourth of the Earth's population. But we can't see the rise in these diseases right now because we are inundated with COVID-19. The wickedness of man continues to grow year after year. Here is what God told Ezekiel to prophesy to his people in the 17th chapter of Ezekiel. He says, God says, an end. It's almost like he's saying, I've had enough, an end. The end is coming on the four corners of the land, God says. Now the end is upon you, and I shall send my anger against you. I shall judge you according to your ways, and I shall bring all your abomination upon you. For my eye will have no pity on you, nor shall I spare you. But I shall bring your ways upon you, and your abominations will be among you. Then you will know that I am the Lord. 
Thus says the Lord God, a disaster, a unique disaster. Behold, it is coming. An end is coming. The end has come. It has awakened against you. Behold, it has come. Brothers and sisters, I believe that is where we are today in God's plan of things. He is saying to us, an end. I've got to put an end to it. A disaster, a unique disaster is coming. And we are, we are, there is a unique disaster coming and it's coming very soon. That's why I asked you at the beginning of the broadcast, are you ready? Are you ready for what's coming? People of God, judgment begins with us. God is calling his people, the spiritual Israel, to humble ourselves and pray, to seek his face, to turn from our wicked ways. Only then will he hear from heaven, forgive our sin, and heal the land. And you can read that in 2 Chronicles 7, 14. Finally, God says to Ezekiel in Ezekiel chapter 3, When I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, and you, Ezekiel, do not warn him or speak out to warn the wicked from his wicked way that he may live, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require your hand. Yet, if you have warned the wicked, and he does not turn from his wicked, wickedness or from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered yourself. Again, God says, when a righteous man turns away from his righteousness, and commits iniquity, and I place an obstacle before him, he shall die. Since you have not warned him, he shall die in his sin, and his righteous deeds which he has done shall not be remembered. But his blood I will require at your hand. However, if you have warned the righteous man that the righteous should not sin, and he does not sin, he shall surely live, because he took warning, and you have delivered yourself. And that's how I take this passage personally. I take it personally because I believe that I have been sent, I have been anointed to warn the people of God of his coming and to warn the world to turn back to uh, our creator, God. And I don't want to, I don't want him, it said that that his blood the, the, those who continue to be wicked in their iniquity, iniquity I, don't, I don't want their blood required in my hand. So I'm telling you, I'm warning you. I'm telling you what God has told me to tell you, the same as he told to Ezekiel. These are the words of the Lord, and we need to take heed. Take heed, O Israel, and live, for the time of the end is near. My brothers and sisters, the time is near. If you have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you need to do it today. Tomorrow is not promised to any of us. Get on your knees. Confess your sins. Repent. Tell him that you cannot live without him, that you need him to be Lord of your life. And he will be Lord of life. He's faithful and just to forgive you your sins and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Won't you do that today? We invite you to go to the Prophecy Unveil The Last Days website at www.prophecyunveil.com and get our book, Daniel's Apocalypse, Revealing the End Times. It's available to you only for the cost of shipping, only for the cost of shipping. You will find it, not only find it enlightening, but also comforting in the difficult days that lie ahead. And if you have a question in regards to prophecy, email us at prophecyunveil7 at yahoo.com. And finally, remember Revelation 1 and 3. Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of the prophecy and heed the things are written in it for the time is near. Brothers and sisters, don't just hear what I'm saying. Heed and do them. For the time is near. Until next week, I'm your host, Gail Stanford. God loves you, and so do I.